blessings and the material blessings. So uh, you can serve and, and bless the, the church with your spiritual giftings, teaching the kids, the children, how to, uh, to grow up knowing the Lord and to be able to serve him. Um, God blesses us to do his work. And I just want you to know there are envelopes in the back of your chairs and we've got an offering table out in the foyer and whatever the Lord has led you to, to give this morning, you can give. Worship goes on with prayer and praise and singing. And uh, God loves to hear the church sing together. I love to hear the church sing together. It's encouraging uh, to know that uh, we love Jesus. And uh, we've had a couple weeks here where everybody's been so busy and down that uh, we haven't been able to have a worship team. And God blessed us with a, a library of, of uh, worship CDs when we first planted a church because when we had the church we didn't have any worship team until God brought a, a group together and uh, Mary's going to lead us in worship this morning so um, as she comes um, I'd like us to stand and we're going to pray uh, in worship this morning I got a dear friend in uh, Slidell, Louisiana. We went down to Katrina uh, 11 times and worked with New Jerusalem Church down there. And uh, Pastor Jimmy texted me a couple weeks ago, or, or not, not, it wasn't two weeks ago, about a week ago. And he said, Mike, looks like we're getting hit again. He said, would you be in prayer with me that God just kind of Let's that storm go over and not bother us. And I said, I'd love to. And we've been praying together for a, at least a week. And uh, that goofy thing missed New Orleans. They got some rain and, and some different things. But here we are in Kinderville, Indiana. And they're in Slidell, Louisiana, eight miles from New Orleans. And we have the ability to pray and come together in one accord. And what a neat relationship. God sent us 15 hours down there to work on Katrina houses. Just to have a relationship to build. And be a part of the body of Christ. And you know what? God answered our prayers. Where two or three are gathered in my name. Jesus said I'm right there with you. And it's so cool to watch and, and uh, see. Uh, the body of, of Christ come together. I asked Pastor Jimmy, I said, are, are we going to need any help down Houston? He said, Mike, I've never seen anybody come together like the churches have in Houston. He said, we could use some drywallers, but other than that, things are getting covered. And you know what? God knows that. God knows that if he allows a tragic uh, moment to happen, that we're going to step up and be the church. And that's what I'm going to preach to you about this morning. So as we worship, uh, I just want you to praise God uh, from the bottom of your heart. You know every one of us are dressed this morning. Uh, a couple of you look fat and sassy like me. We lack for nothing, church. Oh my gosh, are we a blessed nation. So let's praise him this morning. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ because there is no other name. We love your son. What a son that would go to the cross and die for simple, ordinary people like us to come to faith. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you for the opportunity to serve. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to be a part of the body of Christ. Lord, we are truly a blessed people. And we want to lower ourselves this morning and lift you high, praise you and you only. So Lord, we surrender all our mess. We're going to cast our cares on you. And we're going to count on you this morning to bless us and restore us and renew us. Each one of us, right where we stand, the way we are, Lord, you're going to touch us in a mighty and powerful way.
So I ask a blessing over the, uh, the CDs we're going to play, over Mary's voice. Lord, I just ask you to be in the midst of this place. Let your Holy Spirit settle down over us like we've never experienced before. And we'll give you the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for it. And we're going to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go ahead and start that I over again because it's out of time. Yeah. 
you Lord most of the world doesn't even know what they need we're desperate for you and Lord I uh, I just pray in Jesus name that somehow some way the church can stand up and be bold with the gospel again Lord the world craves for you like they've never craved for you before Lord, we're so thankful that you've uh, chosen each one of us in the room here to be your, uh, your children, to be the body of Christ. And Jesus, we acknowledge you as head of that body. Help us to be found faithful as we walk this thing we call Christian, Christ followers. Lord, we're to drop everything and follow you. And Lord, that's hard. It's really hard days. And we need you. We're desperate for you. So Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today, to praise you, to worship you, to lift you high, and uh, give you all the glory and the honor that only you deserve. So Lord, as we uh, continue our service today, I just pray you would bless us with your word. Uh, draw us close, Lord. Open our eyes and our hearts and our ears to what it is we need to do, who we need to be, and what we need to share. And that's Jesus. No matter where we go, the world craves Jesus. So we thank you for the opportunity to be here again today. Uh, bless the teachers as they uh, teach the young students today uh, more about you. Uh, Lord, uh, I just pray a blessing over everybody. And I do that all in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Love on somebody before you sit down. I'll have Karen and Maya. You guys can come up here.
end of the storm you finally find Where the hurt and the tears and the pain don't fall behind Karen and uh, Maya have a couple announcements they want to make, and we'll get them out of the road, and we'll, uh, we'll get you out of here after a bit to go maybe to the Apple Festival or rest or do whatever. I think Jim's got that on. All right, I just wanted to mention, there are some of us girls that are going to out talk about it. Let me see it, hon. It is muted. Now I'm trying that. Okay. Is that better? Oh, I didn't think so. Um, anyways, there are some of us girls that are going to Joyce Myers this week. I'm so excited. I was just there like three weeks ago, but I could use a dose every day. So anyways, we're leaving Friday, and the van is going to leave at 2 o'clock Friday afternoon. We'll stay overnight in, for, in Indianapolis, and we'll come back Saturday. We'll be back between 5 and 6 on Saturday afternoon. If you have any questions, get a hold of me. I'll be getting a hold of you yet this week, because I think there are only eight of us. So. Um, I'll call you all or talk to all of you yet this week, but I'm excited and be, be prayed up because we're going to learn and grow and um, be able to shine our lights even brighter after we get done with Joyce. Mm -hmm. So next week the youth group is going to go to Robert's Farm on Sunday. Right after church we're going to have pizza here and then we'll eat there. So if you guys know anyone, maybe in the youth age, that would like to come, this is a perfect time to be a part of the youth group because we're just having fun and fellowshipping. So, and each kid has to bring five dollars, and that'll just be for their meal. We'll pay for the ticket. So, I invite people, and that's it. And that's it. Oh, cool. I, uh, I've had something weighing on my heart this week. Um, I've had a discipleship series that I wanted to get started and uh, I don't know I just uh, has anybody been heavy this week have you been watching television and the news and uh, how many of you watched uh, about the Nevada shootings and you really don't even watch television uh, that was me I rarely if I don't have a Christian station on like Hillsong or somebody uh, I'm not watching television I just and maybe I, I got my head in the sand and I need to watch the news and current events going on uh, more than I do. But uh, when I heard about that shooting, it just grabbed my heart. Uh, you know, there's been a lot going on um, the last several months in this land. And I, I want to ask us a question this morning. Are you ready? Uh, that question is just it's been running through my mind and my heart all week long. Are you ready? Uh, Pastor Jimmy, he, he, like I told you, he texts me, uh, concerned about a hurricane. We've had like uh, four or five hurricanes with deadly force here in the last month. We were even in the Dominican Republic when, when uh, one came over. Um, earthquakes. My goodness, there are earthquakes everywhere. Forest fires. A, you know, you, you got a hurricane blowing in 12 foot of water on the shore, and then you've got on the other shore fires just raging out of control. Korea, nuclear threats and war. The Vegas shootings again. Racial killings, police officers shot all over our land. There is a mess, church. Where does it all stop? And when I wrote that question down, I sat and thought and prayed. And Jesus says, when I return. It's going to stop when I return. And not until. Matthew 24, 6. 
It says, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Listen, I'm not giving a sermon this morning for you to panic and get all nervous and scared and worried. This isn't about panic. And Jesus is telling us, listen to me, don't panic, church. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Boy, that's kind of discouraging. Uh, this, they, this is not going to be over right away. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famine and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. And you girls that have had birth pains and just starting, you know what that scripture means. It is a time until it comes. But boy, when the birth happens, is it awesome. And when Jesus returns, it's going to be awesome. But he says, don't panic. It ain't going to happen now. We as Christians have to be prepared. And we see our country shying away from our faith that we so, uh, were so dedicated to in the foundation of our country. A country with godly values and morals. And I was thinking yesterday as I looked out that booth and watched families walking together. When our country was birthed, the father took care of his family. Both spiritually and morally. He worked two, three jobs. He worked from daylight till dark so that precious wife of his could stay in the home and be mama to the kids that they reared. Dedicated. We were dedicated at that time. We allow babies to be slaughtered. I looked up 57 million babies have been aborted since 1973. There will probably be in the neighborhood of, of uh, close to 200,000 people at Apple Festival. And if any of you were there yesterday, it was elbow to elbow. Can you imagine putting 57 million people in one spot? And we've killed them. How tragic. We become divided and double-minded as lives, um, uh, as government, as church. We've, we're just divided. We're double-minded. And we've been studying the last month or so that a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. Can you see any instability in our land today? Oh my goodness. We lack commitment and dedication to the church and home and country, and we can't even stand for our national anthem. Are you serious? You talk about border control? We got people in our country that won't even stand for the national anthem. They start the Apple Festival with it, and they end with it. And uh, last evening, I stood there. Uh, I was going to have Tyler yell. He was yelling holy o's and donuts and ham, grilled ham and cheese yesterday, just screaming top of his lungs. I asked him if he'd do it, and he said, yeah, I guess God didn't want him to. But I'm standing there yelling holy o's, and grilled ham and cheese at the end. And then they started playing the national anthem. And I'm looking down midway. And people are just walking and going. And this mom and dad was walking. And this little girl, she had to be kindergarten, first grade at most. And she was holding her mama's hand, and they were just walking 90 mile an hour, and she's, do this. And so people saw her, and they, 
They looked at her and then they listened and here's the national anthem going on. Everybody's so worried about buying their last bag of Holios that's going to kill them that they're missing the national anthem. And this little girl, a kindergartner or first grade, draws enough attention that people stop and they turned around and they looked at the flag and everybody else starts stopping and turning around doing it. Church, we're so busy that things that are really important to us in this land are not even catching our attention anymore. Sad place to be. I know there are some football lovers in here, but I'm telling you what, I'd boycott an NFL game or a NASCAR. I'd boycott anything if they didn't have the gall to stand up and sing. How sad. Vegas has shown us that there are suddenly and instantly in our lives that will cause us to change immediately, whether we want to or not. 59 people, when I wrote this, have no second chance at earthly life. There could be more now. 500 other people get a rerun, a second chance. And if you're like my wife, you say, why did I get a chance and not somebody else? What will they do with it? What are they going to do with that second chance? Where will their lives go from here? And how long till they go back to normal, whatever normal is? We saw churches filled three weeks at 9-11, and then it went back to normal. Are you ready? Does anyone agree that our country, our culture, our society is broken? It is. As we watched the reruns, uh, I was watching, they showed rerun after rerun after rerun because they didn't know what else to say. And you saw these people kind of looking in denial. How many people did you hear in the interview say, we thought it was fireworks? And then, when they saw that it was actual gunfire, they went into a state of panic. I mean, people were going everywhere, and they didn't know where to go. They didn't know where the, the harm, the threat was coming from. You got to do something. And it was just panic. And didn't Jesus said, don't panic. The darkness hit an assassin. You know, it it just, it, it makes me watch and pay attention to darkness. Darkness is sin. And I probably pay attention to darkness a lot more than, than a lot of people do. Because it, it's, I'm a pastor and I see people living in darkness. Do you know if it had been the day light when that rascal busted them two windows out, somebody would have seen it? It would have caught attention. Here it is in the darkness. And he broke those lights out and he's shooting and shooting and shooting. And darkness hides it. They have no clue where that's coming from. And some of us are in a dark state in our lives and we don't even know it. And the mess is coming at us 90 mile an hour. And that darkness has got our sin covered up, church. And it's got to get exposed. And the only thing that will do that is the light of Jesus Christ. The light of every one of you in here. You carry the light of Jesus. And it dispels darkness. Church, we've got to get back to Jesus. No one knew where to flee to. There's one place to run to, and that's Jesus. He said, if you're in sexual sin, you can't do anything but flee from it. You can't hang around, you can't mess around, look back at it. you got to flee from it. And we've got to start fleeing from our sin, our darkness. 
What is it in life that becomes important to us? The cars, the house, the cash? What's important in our hearts and in our lives today? Matthew 16, 26. It says, And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? That came to my mind when I thought about Stephen Paddock. He chose a path of destruction. He accepted Satan's lies and death. And it not only affected him, it affected 59 other people and 500 others that were loaded in EMSs and pickups and God only knows what else to get to the hospital. He chose that path not only for himself but for many others. A man that seemed to be wealthy, that guy had money. Not a troublemaker. The neighbors said, that guy never caused any trouble. His own brother said, I don't know what caused him to do it. He loved to take a chance, and he loved to gamble. And church, a lot of the church, universal, is gambling with their souls right now. We're in a big deal. And when we win, Satan lets us win just enough to keep drawing us in and letting us gamble just one more time. We never know when we're going to bet and lose. Stephen Paddock. We drive within three feet of someone driving 65 and texting at the same time. You're driving down the road and there's some guy high on dope. That far away from you going opposite directions. People are racist. People hate Jesus and family. People that are broken. The systems let them down. And I think when this all comes to wash out, we're going to see that Stephen Paddock, somewhere along the line, did not have a family structure or he cried out for help somewhere, some way, and the system laid him down. I could be wrong. But I'm telling you, somebody without a visible trouble in their life has a darkness inside of them that they've been carrying a long time. Our land, our society, our culture is broken without Jesus. And we did that series on uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14 and it just keeps coming back to my mind and that's why I did it. Because there's, there's a road map to what we need to do and then there's a blessing and, and obedience from our God the Father that follows if we do that. 2 Chronicles 7.14 If, 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 if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And when we get in a tragedy like that, uh, a Nevada thing or, or a hurricane where it's just devastation everywhere. When you read that scripture, it comes to life just a little bit different with a little more meaning. That there's a responsibility we have among us as the body of Christ to, to shape up and get on our knees and be concerned about people. The church has got to get back to Jesus. I don't know if you guys can see that up there or not, but I got a $20 bill taped up there. You know what? We, get, we blame money for our trouble, the love of money. Scripture talks about love of money. How many know that that goofy $20 bill taped up there will not buy you a bag of groceries? It won't pay a car payment. It won't cause you to go bankrupt. It won't do anything up there taped on that board. 
It's a green $20 bill, and there ain't a one of you in here that wouldn't love to have it. It's mine. <laughs> Unless you steal it. I want us to know that money's not our trouble, church. It's the holder of the money that causes the trouble. It's how we spend it, how we use it. That $20 bill can bless God's work and help the poor. It can buy our groceries. It can help make our house payment. Or it can buy a box of ammunition and kill somebody. It's in the hands of the beholder. And what do we hear? Got to get a hold of that NRA and get them rifles out of here. Well, you know I'm going to tell you where I stand with gun control. I don't think our land, the United States of America, has one good excuse for an automatic weapon in the hands of the public. Amen. Now, I love to shoot a rifle. I love to shoot. I'm not against guns at all but you name me one person that's ever done a bit of good with a machine gun unless he was listed in the United States military somewhere or a police officer you don't need and then you gotta make that baby shoot even faster the gun that gun happens to be fake. And I had, to, I had to text all my daughters and ask for a gun. And I guess, I don't know, only one of them said, yeah, I think we got one somewhere. I think they was afraid I was going to get on them because they let their kids have guns or something. But Carter let me use his gun. That gun won't hurt anybody. It won't protect anybody. You can pass a thousand and one laws about that gun. And if a wacko or somebody picks that up and wants to take me out. And he's got a bullet in that baby. Phew, I'm done. Pass all the laws you want. And then I got to think about people. Now, them are people. Uh, I, I wanted Maya to get me some people picture, but uh, I ended up this morning at 6 o'clock drawing stick people. Now, I don't know about that. But you can tell they're people. People aren't our problem. How many times do we gossip about people? Point our fingers at people and ridicule them and work them down. And scripture says our problem is not flesh and blood. And I'm way ahead of myself, Jimmy. Ephesians 6, 12 and 13 our struggles is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil and the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. I'm asking you, church, are you ready? Do you have your armor on? Do you even know what the armor is? It'll go on to tell you if you want to read it there in Ephesians 6. It might be a good study for you this week. I'm going to jump back to Romans. You know, it kind of puts a perspective on, uh, on the trouble that we have in this land today. We're in uh, Romans 1. 28 through 32. It uh, tells us what happens when we quit acknowledging God as Lord. 
Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, they abandoned them to their foolish thinking, or he, God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious, malicious behavior, and gossip. Gossip's even in their church. They are backstabbers. Haters of God. Insolent. Proud and boastful. Now listen to this. They invent new ways of sinning. And they disobey their parents. That invent new ways to sin. Sin is not bad enough. A machine gun can't shoot fast enough. You got to get one of those bumps or whatever they call them. And put on it so it shoots faster. Let's just invent something to make that baby shoot faster. So I can kill more people while I got the chance. Isn't it crazy? Who would have ever thought that a tank of anhydrous ammonia that can make corn grow and grow and grow could, could make dope? A car battery, battery acid, a battery that causes our vehicles to start and take us to work and take our family around places can be used to put in our bodies. Church is so bad, we're inventing evil, like the scripture says. Stephen Paddock was just a normal guy, so they say. But his biggest problem was he didn't know Jesus. And you're saying, Pastor Mike, you could be judging him. No, I just was looking at the fruit he produced. I don't know about y'all, but I know a lot of people that aren't saved that don't have Jesus Christ in their hearts, and they would not kill anybody. 22,000 people went to a concert living the American dream. Jumped in their cars and set out to have a blast. Sing and be merry. Some lost their life. Some forever had their lives changed. And I wrote down there's a time for us to change some things. 58 people met their day on October 1st. And I'm asking you, if you'd have been there, were you all right with the Lord? Would you have been good with the Lord October 1st at 10.08 p.m.? And better yet, are you good with the Lord right now? Is he first in your life? Does he know your name? I thought it was interesting. John 14 came to my mind. John starts out... With Jesus' words, don't let your hearts be troubled. There he is again, saying don't panic, don't let your hearts be troubled, church. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? Jesus is saying to him, what purpose have I got to lie to you? I'm the truth. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when everything is ready, I'll come and get you. So that you will always be with me where I am. I ask you, are you ready? He's coming. Stephen Paddock could be coming before him.
Are you ready? And then I wrote down, what are you thinking? What do you think about the most day in and day out? Is it all the stuff, the busyness that you've got to do? Or do you think about God and people's brokenness and their spiritual health? What, what breaks your heart? We're to have our hearts broken for what breaks Jesus' heart. And I think we've gotten away from it, church. There are days I got to yank my own chain and stop myself in my tracks and say, Hey, get with the program, bro. You know better than what you're doing. It's in your mind. Do you follow Jesus or do you listen to death? Because you're either listening to the world or you're listening to Jesus. There's no gray area, no middle ground. It's lukewarm. And what does Revelation say happens to us if we're lukewarm? We get spit out of his mouth, don't we? Your mind needs to be renewed and transformed. It was made for God. Your mind is evil's target. Church, there is a Satan roaming around seeking whom he may destroy. He wants to take you out. And Stephen Paddock was not our trouble. It was those evil desires in his heart that prevailed and caused him to pull that trigger. Am I not saying that he's responsible? Yeah, he's responsible. But thank God we didn't have to worry about it because uh, it was done. And I don't know if I should put it that way because that's not really the way it is. We have to win the battle of our minds. That's the only thing that's going to bring good behavior in our land. The only thing is renewing our minds. Because we've got stinking thinking. And if any of you go to, with, with them to Joyce Myers, you're probably going to hear that. You're going to hear the battlefield of the mind. She's going to cover a lot of that stuff. It all boils down to Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, church. He said, I've gone to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I'm coming back to take you where I am. And, and old uh, Thomas, he said, where are you going? We don't know where you're going. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one goes to the Father except through me. Church, we have a responsibility to share the gospel of Jesus Christ no matter where we go or what we're doing. You can be selling holios out there and share Jesus with, the, with somebody. You need to be sharing it with him because they eat that bag of donuts and a fourth of a pound of grease. They're gonna, they need prayer. We had to get another jug of oil last night. Two and a half gallon. I think it's two and a half gallon. Two and a half gallon oil got carried out of that place yesterday in donuts. And it ended up right here. Whew. Scary. You know what? There, there, you can you can talk about this till the cows come home. Is it God allowing a mess because we're a sinful people? And that question was asked when the little boy got healed. Uh, whose whose sin caused this boy uh, to be sick like that? Was it his mom's, his dad's? Who who caused this? And he said, it happened so that I might be glorified. And church, we've got to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've got to glorify our Lord. We've got to lift him up. We have to start being parents and, and raise children in the way they should go. That precious, I'm assuming that's a little girl with the pink. Oh, sometimes you get in trouble assuming things. 
Think about that precious little girl. Does she deserve to have a good, healthy country and, and a Lord that loves her? She didn't say, whoa, time out, uh, uh, before you have me, are, are you going to live for Jesus? She got brought into the world. And boy, is she content. I'll bet she can scream too, can't she? <laughs> Church, we have a responsibility. You know, there are Stephen Paddocks all over the land. Uh, uh, we were blessed to be able to go to Crosswinds the other night and, and take a, a, a suicide seminar. And I don't know about the people that were there, but I got blessed because I, I deal with it some and, and uh, pray with people and, and watch the devastation that it causes. And you know what? When we hear a, a lot of devastation, we went to Dominican Republic and there was 16, 17, 17 kids, I think, down there. And we heard three testimonies. Every one of them had broken families, did they not, Tim? The precious girl that broke my heart the worst was from the UK originally, and she was left to hospital. Mom, Dad never, she never saw her mom, Dad. And then she gets adopted, and at like age five, her, her adoptive mama dies, left with her, her daddy, adoptive dad, that sex traffickers. He, he's a sex trafficker. She was in cars with men all the time. I wish I could use the word to describe how them kids' hearts feel because it's cussing and I can't do it. But they are mad. And I think there are Stephen Paddocks all over this land that have been hurt by their families. Maybe a mom and dad or God only knows who has messed them up. And they've carried it inside this precious soul of theirs so long that it just has to break out and they have to be free. And church, there's only one thing that will set us free and it's Jesus Christ. And whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And we've got to become the church again. We've got to be a light in a dark place. And you know, God only knows how many of those 58 people were instantly with him in heaven, rejoicing. There are broken families all over that place. And it was all they had gathered to have a blast. When those people scattered, did you notice the debris on the ground? I thought, Lord, I'm glad I ain't cleaned that place up. And after I saw all that debris, they showed a guy that was a police, or had a, had a military background, I think it was. I heard so many stories, I'd get them mixed up. But all he could think about was hauling them people to the hospital. And he runs for this guy's brand spanking new Chevrolet white pickup truck. And opened the door and guess what? The idiot left his keys in there. He fired that baby up. Drove it up there. They filled the bed with people. Filled the back seat with people. And that white truck was red from blood. And he says, I think, I don't know, but I think I had to call, haul close to 30 people to the hospital. Just because the guy left his keys in his truck accidentally? Don't think so. Glad I'm not a detailer having to clean them seats. But what kind of a price do you put on life? Church, the bottom line is, if we're ready, it doesn't matter if we walk out these doors and get machine gunned down in just a little bit, or if we get to go to the Apple Festival and eat all that greasy food, it doesn't matter. 
when Jesus calls us home, he's went to prepare a place for us. And you know what? We die to ourselves one time not to die again. And when we die to ourselves and take Jesus on in our hearts, we live forever. Right. And you know what? There are people in heaven right now that have been through so many traumatic things. And they're peaceful. They have joy in their hearts. The cancer isn't in them anymore. The leg that got cut off is there. They're walking. And I think of Jim not being able to see. And Clem not being able to hear. And Chris having cancer over here. With Jesus, it's win-win. And it may not be what we hope for or pray for. But church, we win. And winning doesn't look like the world portrays it to look. Successful is not making a million dollars and sitting at a gambling table and ripping them people off and being lucky. Don't run on luck, church. Sooner or later, Satan's going to cash your cards in and you're going to lose. You better be in the blessing and the ways of Jesus when your time comes. I've got two minutes and I'm going to take it. I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to do it. It's been a while since I'd done this. Mark referenced it a couple weeks ago, and I brought it up my sermon, and I'm just going to read it. It's a dash. A lot of you have heard it. I've got to where I do it in every funeral service I do today. There were times when I, I and my, my thinking and judgmental spirit would read this because I thought the people needed to hear it. And the Lord checked my spirit and said, you know what, everybody needs to hear it. Don't be, don't be picking them out, singling them out. And every funeral that I do today, if it's yours, you're going to get this read at your funeral. Because it's powerful. It's called the day. I was born in 1951. Dash 2000 whenever I pass. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. And he noted that first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For the dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our days. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left. You could be at dash mid-range. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real. And always try to understand the way other people feel. And be less quick to anger and show appreciation more. And love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile. Remembering that this special day might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spend your days? Isn't that cool, Paul? 
And you know, I get called a lot to do funerals. Uh, I, I wondered at, at, at first why, and, and I'm just blessed to be able to do it. You know, when, when you do a funeral, people, you have their attention. There's a finality there that just scares the living crap right out of people. Because I could be next. And you know you've got the most opportune time to preach and share Jesus with them. It's the only thing that matters. And church, I've done so many funerals standing in front of people that didn't care about Jesus. And I'm thinking, why am I here? It's falling on deaf ears. They don't care. But you know what? There's people that care in there. They care. They don't want to hear it, but they hear it when you share it. And there will be a day, church, that God wants to use every one of your giftings in here to share with somebody the love and mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. And it's not up to you whether they accept it or not. It's up to you to share it. Because there's going to be a day every knee will bow and answer to God Almighty for what they did or didn't do. And they'll say, uh, God, uh, I didn't know. I didn't have the chance to know. And they'll say, remember when you were at uh, Bobby Joe's funeral and Pastor Mike was standing up there sharing my love story with you? Don't tell me. You don't know. Hell's real, people. You don't want to go there. There's a whole lot more on hell in the Bible than there is heaven. And it's to tell you and let you know you don't want to go there. Now I'll share the glory when you get there, but you don't want to go down there. Because it's bad. And one's forever just like the other one is. Where's your mind? Are you ready? all I ask. You guys have been gone a week and you had a baby? <laughs> the Lord... The Lord uh, said, have Jenny play something. And I looked over and she's holding a precious little child. Another one needs to know Jesus. Fathers and mothers, parents, church family, grandpas and grandmas. We got to step up the plate. We got to start batting. The God that I serve and the God that you serve has already hit the home run right out of the park. He's waiting on you to pick up the bat and swing. That's all he asks you to do. We need help. I can't do it by myself. This, this group that we're blessed to have this morning, we can't do it by ourselves. The fields are white for harvest and the workers are few, church. If God has given you the ability to work, you better use it. Because there will be a day you'll say, I can't work, I can't work, I can't work. And your back will get broke, your leg will get cut off, something will happen to you to where you can't work. We need to be the church. That's all I'm asking you to do is be the church. That's all Jesus wanted. He told those disciples, come on boys and follow me. And the rich man, 
He says, Jesus, what do I got to do to follow you? He says, sell everything you got, dude. Everything. Give it to the poor. Come follow me. And what does scripture say? He was grieved. He was sad. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world, church, and lose his soul? Stephen Paddock had almost everything. He gambled to the point in his life that that sucker had the courage to cart in box after box after box of ammo and boxes of guns after boxes of guns. He didn't fear anything because he gambled and won so many times. And they're on the hotel. How could you let that happen? Karen and I, as like I told you, was in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, doing a show. How many places have we carted in like that? They never pay no attention to you. They've rented the convention center, and they know you're carting stuff in there. There were probably shows going on after show. Don't blame that place for not having the right security. People are not our problem. Satan is. And he'll take you out in a second if you give him a foothold. Some of us have given him a foothold. Some of us in here have given him a foothold. And I want you to get yourself together and get on your knees and start asking Jesus, Jesus, forgive me. I've sinned against thee. That scoundrel of a David was a man after God's own heart. And that turkey sinned time after time after time. And he got on his knees and said, Father, forgive me. That's all it takes, church. Jesus went to the cross on purpose. So that's all it took. It was for us to get on our knees and say, Father, I've sinned against thee. Please forgive me. So is anybody in panic or fear? I hope not. Fear not. Don't panic, church. Grab a hold of Jesus. Because it doesn't matter what happens. As long as we're sharing the love, mercy, and grace of Christ. Tammy does it with the preschoolers. We do it. But it's not the school's job. It's not the church's job. It's our job. As parents, as a body of Christ, to share Jesus. When we dismiss, uh, I'm looking for some, and uh, Steve and Diane's here, they can come up and pray with us. Mark and Jenny, Mark can come up maybe. If you kind of strayed away or something, I don't want you to, I, I don't, I'm not doing, God had her holding a baby, so I didn't do it, I guess. What I'm asking you to do, if, if you're away from Jesus right now, or you've never accepted him into your heart, church, today's the day. Today's the day of salvation. Don't walk in here. How many of you ever in, in your, your days have went to Shipshawana? years ago and there used to be a sharp curve in the road on 20 and there was a six mile restaurant right there you, you know where I'm talking about does anybody remember the sign that was on the light pole for 20 years anybody huh don't be caught dead without Jesus Thank you, Jimmy. I thought you was in Missouri when that was up there. You've been around here longer than I thought. Don't be caught dead without Jesus. You know that's a snickery thing? It's a serious thing. So I said all that to say, come up here and pray. Know Jesus before you leave here. It'll change your life forever. And those suddenlies, those instantlies, won't cause fear. They won't cause panic. They'll cause the peace of Jesus. 
Father, I thank you so much for your love, mercy, and grace that you've given each one of us in this room. Lord, I, I just look back at my life and I'm not where I need to be. I'm so far away from where I need to be, it isn't funny. But Lord, I am not where I used to be. You have changed my heart, my life, my perspective. You've taken the fear and the darkness out of me and caused it to be peace. Love, mercy, and grace that we all need. Lord, this world is craving for you. There are going to be Stephen Paddocks. There are going to be more earthquakes, more hurricanes. There are going to be more fires. There are just going to be a lot of traumatic experiences. And Lord, they're going to come into our lives suddenly, instantly. And we're going to stand firm. We're going to have the armor of God on. And Lord, we're going to trust in you. You have told us we're going to the other side and we're going. So Lord, help us to have the faith to get there. Help us to share our faith for others to get there. And we'll thank you for it all. And we're going to do it in Jesus' name because there is no other name worthy. Amen. Go with God. He loves you and so do we. And uh, don't leave here if you need prayer.